All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and, you know, keep on watching this uh, videos, these recordings, podcasts. Uh, again, my goal of doing these uh, videos, these conversations is to inspire you guys to share more stories. I heard one uh, a saying that goes by uh, every person is a story yet to be told. And I, I strive to get uh, people that have been uh, either successful or very important or that I really admire and have something to share with you guys. And today I brought on, I brought on Alejandro Garcia. And I'm pretty excited about Alejandro because uh, you're, you don't have anything to do <laughs> with finances or money or the things that I, or digital marketing, the things that I follow, right? But uh, from the work that I saw you doing in school, back in Miami Dade Honors College, uh, you were doing pretty amazing things and even people outside of the college were saying it. And that really, uh, you know, made me say, okay, I got to bring on this guy. We can talk about leadership and uh, most importantly, though, your story. I want people to resonate with your story and see what they can take away from that. So I give you the mic. You're welcome to introduce yourself. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm, I'm humbled that you, uh, that you think that. And uh, obviously we're friends from, from a while back. <laughs> Um, so I, I guess my story starts off, uh, you mentioned Miami Dade, how I got to Miami Dade. Um, I, I graduated at high school at the top of my class and, um, I just had one problem. I, I didn't have the complete profile with the best test scores. So I applied to all the top schools and you know, when you, when you wait to hear back, uh, you expect to have good news, but it turns out that I only had a handful that really accepted me. I, and the, the big ones were really uh, George Washington University, um, UF, uh, University of Florida, and uh, the honors program at Miami Dade College. And I, I started seeing that all the people that, that I had gone to school with and were really at the top of, of, my, of my class in school we're going to all these amazing universities and George Washington University only offered me a, a financial aid package that I would have had to pay like $10,000 every year out of pocket. And that's not including the personal expenses that come along with that. UF gave me around the same deal. So it, it, was, it was a moment of uh, being humbled. Um, it was a moment of learning how the system worked and it was a moment of realizing that sometimes even though you work hard you might not get what you what you put in mm -hmm. and that's when i decided to to uh enroll in the honors program I, I decided to go with the honors program because uh it gave me the opportunity and it gave me the opportunity to get that this this the, get that school that i that i was looking for get that the match those stories that i was hearing about about these, these crazy stories about kids coming here to the US and only having um, a year or two in the US and, and beautiful immigrant stories. And, and then moving on to crazy schools like the University of Pennsylvania, moving on to Harvard, moving on to Cornell. And, and so I, I bet on myself and um, I, I thought that hard work and, and determination for another two years could, could possibly lead to that same um, same story, same outcome. And, uh, and thankful, thank God, thank, thankfully that was the case. Uh, after, after MDC, I, I ended up at Princeton and, um, and I, I take so much pride in saying that I took the unconventional route. I I'm, a, I'm at Princeton and I don't have a high, a high standardized test score. I consider that to be a, a huge, um, success because it shows that, you sometimes can go against the system and still get all the benefits it has to offer as long as you as, as you work hard and, and you you play the system the right way definitely definitely brother i mean that's pretty exciting uh you you are ahead of the 99 percent of the people that i've met uh people that i've talked to uh, on these conversations uh definitely killing it just uh I didn't expect that what you're saying about not having the best test, test scores. Actually, when I met you uh, back in Miami Dade, everyone had the, <laughs> the, the, the idea that you were top of, of, of the classes and top of everything. 
you know, but it was because of the way you drive yourself, the way you move yourself. And that's admirable. Um, and that's what I want to focus on on this conversation. But it's great that you talk about those deficiencies because uh, a lot of people, uh, I know a lot of the listeners here are going to be students and probably don't know what they want to do after high school or, you know, even college themselves. So um, maybe and, let's and go if, a little. Uh-huh. if you let me, it, it was never about what was going inside the classroom. I, I always seem to have a good handle of that. I, I've always like, Throughout high school, throughout MDC, it, w- it was always a 4.0, but it, w- it was the system. It was it was the, the standardized test, the SAT, the ACT. These things that really have no, really no way of really determining what your knowledge about the material is or what your actual intelligence level are. So it, it, it's, it's, it was the system that worked against me and I had to sort of tackle it, tackle it that way. So in, in a way, I guess I just wanted to reframe the conversation. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely. And do you did you study though? Because I like emphasizing that I don't. Uh, there's uh, some justification that goes around our heads. I have a sibling, and she's often like saying the same thing. Uh, those standard uh, tests suck. I know they suck, but I actually pre- prepare for them. A lot of people give that excuse without even you know studying for them and so on. I, I imagine you were the one that uh, spent the the, uh, the weekend I- studying tutorings um self-study i mean i took a i took the sat four times okay i i mean so the, there was there was the effort there. the effort was there perfect um but it, <laughs> all right guys you guys are listening to that. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean uh, it's uh, it's part of life you even when you're trying to prepare you're going to fail the same thing in, in business a lot of the people that i brought on here they know they put in the work they know they reach out to people they ask for help and they still may fall short but that's totally fine and same thing in school and so um uh talk about well we can we can go back and forth uh, i like to focus more in in the beginning of your story like maybe your childhood your parents, how they are, and your motivation right now, et cetera, et cetera. So motivation, um, I think, I think every immigrant or, you know, person that comes from an immigrant house Mm -hmm. has that motivating force behind them. Like my motivating force and my parents, the fact that they gave up everything to give me the opportunity to do what I'm doing. That's the motivation for me to stay up uh, every night until 3, 4 a.m. studying about constitutional interpretation to um, history about, you know, the Americas and Latin America and really honing in on those skills that will someday come to be beneficial um, as, as a policymaker. Um, I, I think that's that's the motivating force be, behind me doing what I'm doing. Um, and, and that really that's what pushed me towards looking for that unconventional route to get to the outcome that I wanted. I knew that I, I knew that I didn't want to go to GW, George Washington University, not just because it didn't give me the financial help, but also because I knew that I, I knew that I wanted a little bit more than that. And if you want motivation, the the night that I decided to reject uh, GW and go to MDC, my dad asked me, it's one of the craziest moments I have in life. He asked me, so, so you want to study politics? You're giving up studying politics in the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., and you want to study it in, in Little Havana and in, in MDC. And I told him, yeah. Uh, and part of, and I didn't say that in the moment, but part of, the, of why I replied <laughs> yes was because I knew that I could validate his struggles to, to give me all these opportunities by going to Little Havana, working a little bit at MDC, working a little bit harder, and um, and achieving that dream of 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 landing in a place that both gave me the financial help and and gave me my dream, Princeton. Yeah, wonderful. I mean, yeah, I see, I I see Miami Dade College at, uh, College as a bridge, man. Uh, I don't know a lot of people. I think the Honors College is a very elite uh, side of it, in my opinion. That's just me. I, I may be wrong, I agree. Uh, but because uh, the resources, you know, 
and and the reality is that we are motivated i mean imagine you you were applying to the <laughs> george washington uh, other people were applying to princeton already you know, right after high school some people to yale etc these kids that get accepted to the honors college are not regular kids that just want to you know get a degree get a job and bye bye you call it a day no these kids are actually like you that want to be policy makers make a change in the united states and maybe in your home country right and so those people that are listening if you're in high school i highly encourage you to if you don't know what route to take to go to the Miami Dade Honors, get the resources, maximize and get all the use out of it, and then uh, jump onto wherever you want to take it. Travel as much as you can, you know, other things that Alejandro and I did, and even more. <laughs> and so, uh, what's your life right now like in, uh, in Princeton? Uh, what are the, what's the focus right now, and where do you want to take it with policy making and, and uh, you know, what steps to where you want to where you want to get. So right now I'm, I'm studying remote for the year because of the pandemic. Yeah. They, they actually offered, they, they made it, they made it the policy for the year. And, um, but in terms of like what it, what it's been in like the school for the past two years, it's, it's been pretty crazy. Like when I first got to the school, like a week or two into, into classes, I hear this big announcement that like one of the professors from from an, a completely different department from when I'm studying nuclear physics won <laughs> uh, won a Nobel won a Nobel uh, prize in um, in physics, and <laughs> that really put in perspective the the type of environment that I was in. Like these these are uh, professors that are teaching us uh, materials, but are also making groundbreaking research. So um, it's, it's been pretty cool to be part of that environment. Um, you know, I've, I've worked already for some professors as a research assistant. So that's been, that's been really uh, awesome to do, uh, to sort of be part of their projects and help them, I guess, in a way, put, put their, uh, their ideas and the, research, the, the sources behind their ideas together. And um, I guess the, the mission here is, um, I, I'd like to finish my time at Princeton, um, you know, with a uh, with a concentration in politics and and uh, American institutions, and then I'd like to then transfer onto a uh, into a law school and uh, get a law degree, and then from there hopefully make a uh, a transition to uh, the the political world, um, whether that's you know a think tank, a nonpartisan think tank that you know think tanks are, are research based, they they basically study policies and then they give this information to policymakers from both uh from those from both parties parties mm -hmm. or the um working for like a you know a, in the actual world of politics in where where the uh center of uh of the political focus is at you know so congress working for uh, a congressional representative in, in some sort of office or even uh clerking for a for a supreme court justice or or a local um a district uh, a judge or something around along those lines would be uh, would be what I would be looking towards doing after after law school. Big game, man. Big game. <laughs> These are big stuff. Most people. I mean, how old are you again? Uh, I'm I'm 22, going to 23. Okay, 23. Very young. I mean, most people are thinking about video games and I don't know, going out in the weekend and you're thinking about going to the Supreme Court one day. <laughs> Pretty exciting. That's awesome. And so uh, um, I know you mentioned about uh, your immigrant, your background as an immigrant and your parents being immigrants, but uh, is there a, a deeper, maybe let's get into that deep talk. Why do you want to go into law? Uh, is it something you saw, a personal experience, or something like that? So I think I think the field of law, I, it it just gives you the the best foundation to to then make an informed uh, decisions when you're in that place of of a of a policymaker. But I think also having if that doesn't work out, if the policymaking route doesn't work out, I think uh, civil rights are an important thing and. Um, you know, working for organizations like the ACLU would be amazing. Um, the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, mm -hmm. uh, defending people from from that lens. Um, 
working to, you know, working here in, in South Florida, there's a lot of misconception as to what what's really going with it, what's really going on with the immigrant population here and really helping them in, in a way. Um, there's a lot, there's an influx now of Venezuelan immigrants yeah. helping them adjust and and uh, and transition to this great country. So um, immigration law is also something that that I find very interesting. So that those are really the purposes behind um, me saying that I'd like to go to law school. Okay, perfect, good enough. Um, you know, I'm more interested in the finances, uh, in the personal finance stuff, uh, digital marketing, branding, and all that good stuff. Uh, what's What's your experience with money? Maybe you can share with us since you have another perspective, you know? Yeah, I I think money is, it, it's difficult to handle. That's why I, I really appreciate when people, people like you put forward these types of uh, initiatives where you, you're sort of giving us some of these tools that help us manage it a little bit better. And, um, you know, the, the perspective that I had even while at MDC was, you know, we always used to get money back at, at MDC because yeah. of because of the uh, that's how good the honors program was. Mm -hmm. And uh, the perspective that I've always had, and I think you'll resonate with this a little bit, just because of the videos you put out and the resources you're putting out. It's uh, especially as a student, it's always good to save up a little bit of, of what you get and a little bit of your earnings, because you know I'm I'm. I'm, I'm speaking of all these goals that I have. I'm speaking about going to law school, doing all these things, all these things, but those things in order to apply for them, they require a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> just taking the LSAT, just taking the LSAT, which is the, the test to, you know, to get into the, the law the admissions school. test, mm -hmm. just paying for those prep courses, paying for like law school, that's our, like the law school applications, that's already about three, possibly $4,000. So like my experience has been always thinking about those future goals okay. and um, setting aside since MDC a little bit, uh, you know, a little chunk to the savings uh, jar, you know, theoretically to, yeah. um, to be prepared for those, uh, for when those events come in life. And, uh, and yeah, that, that's, that's sort of been my experience. I think, I think you resonate with that because it's sort of what you preach. So. I hope yeah, that's what you practice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I've been working since uh, 2012 when I came here to the United States and uh, I made it a goal. My mom, thank God, she gave me a good advice. I, she, she, she didn't practice what she preached, but uh, it was good that I listened anyway. And when it came to for time for things like trips and stuff that were going on that I really wanted and liked and already ambition, uh, just like you, I had already something, you know, in the back of my head. And so uh, it was possible that way. Um, yeah, I mean, doing this, I, I like, I think I like this where it's going because you have a different perspective saying that it's difficult. Uh, it, it just shows me uh, a different perspective. I thought if, if it was uh, an easy conversation, but the reality is that it is for the regular uh, the person that's not thinking about it all the time. And it doesn't mean that you have to be ambitious uh, or avaricioso, you know, to, to say that you like money, but to understand that it's a tool, just like anything else, just like your knowledge, your ability to, to talk about law, you know? And so I think if you have anything else to add on to that. No, uh, I guess, uh... You know, just thank you, man. Thank you for uh, for putting these programs together, and and um, it, it takes a lot of effort to to do this. And you, you start off by talking a little bit about leadership and oh, yeah. um, what you're thank doing you. right now. <laughs> what what? No, but it it's true. What you're doing right now is leadership. Um, you are you are trying to uh, be a resource for people. You're trying to serve people. And a lot of people don't understand that leadership is, it's inexplicably and in intricately linked to service. So when you serve people by nature, you are a leader. Um, so thank you for being a leader for us and thank you for 
for uh, for putting the 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 time and the effort to do this. No, not at all. So let me share why I talked to you about that leadership. It was because one day we were going to do a um, it was a community service in Calle Ocho, and it was this paint shop or art gallery, and the lady who were who, who were about to help, uh, she said, "Well, you guys are super smart. I really like this one kid. His name is Alejandro." And <laughs> right away, the three you guys, the three people that were there, we knew who this Alejandro was. It was you. And she started saying how you gather so many people. Uh, and so that we had to catch up to the same level. And, and I told her, damn, that's our responsibility. You're giving us, you're raising the bar for us. And she said, well, if he did it by himself, you guys can do it. That guy was a real leader. And I was like, damn, that's good. I mean, if that's something she said it behind your back, I mean, what can people say in front of you? So that, that's why, I, I mean, if you want to elaborate on, a little bit on that, why do you want to, I mean, I mean, you, you want to be a leader. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it goes back to why I want to go to law school. It goes back to Definitely. like what all these, I, I want to serve people. I want to give back to the community. And, you know, the, I, I, I'm assuming what you're talking about are the uh, Viernes Culturales events in Little yeah. Havana and Cayo Ocho. Yeah. Um, the, those they were, <laughs> that lady those were <laughs> yeah, th those were nights where people all over the, the city really just, they just walk around the street and they, and they look at the art. And I just saw it as an opportunity to tell people about on power cancer. And I, I just saw it as an opportunity to, you know, offer, um, uh, you know, the students at MDC, people that studied with us, yeah. an opportunity to sort of do service with me and let people know about the on power with cancer like uh, initiative and the on power cancer um, fundraising campaign, which it was meant to like fundraise uh, uh, for cancer um, treatment and awareness in the area. And, and that was part of the awareness component. So mm -hmm. um, that, that's how, that's how I came in contact with her. Before that, there was really no one there uh, <laughs> who, who were giving out uh, pamphlets or like advertising anything in, in with related to what we were doing and and yeah yeah I, I, that's how that worked out yeah kudos to you man kudos to you for that well man i mean it's been a good talk i loved it it gave me a different perspective and you're someone different brought on here uh, most people are entrepreneurs doing something related to money or help serving they're certainly leaders uh, but from a different perspective. So thank you again. Uh, if you have any last thoughts, stop me. Otherwise, if you, if, where can people find you on social media, et cetera? Uh, no, I, I, I think I've, I'm, I, I've said, I said my piece, uh, you know, just thank you again. Uh, on social media, I, I, I'm so bad with social media that, okay. I, uh, <laughs> that I, I always have my head in the books, but I think my handle is uh, Alejandro Garcia 28 on uh, Instagram. And that's really, if that's I'm ever good. active, that that's where, that's where <laughs> I, I would be, but yeah. Okay, perfect. We're going to have that link down below. If anyone is interested to, to work with you closely or just get to know more about your story, maybe what you're going to be doing in the future, something like on par. Uh, or something I like, uh, it's going to be exciting. So thank you, brother. I hope to have you again here, maybe with a different talk, a different topic. And thanks, Aaron, for your time. Okay? All right, man. Thank you again. You have a great day.